So now what we're going to get into are going to be the different tissue types and some specializations they can have. So the first one we're going to talk about is going to be what's in blue in this picture, and that's going to be the dermal tissue. So going back to your notes, dermal tissue is going to be the outside. It can be covered with that cuticle. Remember that's that clear waxy stuff. Um, bark is also going to be an example of dermal tissue. And um, there are going to be a couple of versions that are like specialized types of cells that make up dermal tissue. So the first type is going to be what are called guard cells. So remember we talked about stomata, which were going to be the openings in a leaf? They're actually going to be covered by these guard cells. You can see these around it. And those are going to be ones that will actually pump water into themselves to close or open when the stomata needs to be open or closed for gas exchange for the plant. So that's going to be the first type of specialization. Um, the next one is going to be trichomes. And this is a great picture of trichomes here. So um, if you think about like a sunflower stem and how it's all hairy, those are trichomes on it. And so what they do is they're going to try and keep the surface of the leaves and the stem as cool as possible. So if you think about it, every hair is going to make a shadow, and those shadows are going to keep the surface a little cooler. And the other thing is, in the morning, they're going to hold on to the dew a little bit longer, um, and that's going to keep the plant cooler as well, right? If you think about when you get out of the shower, the last thing to dry is your hair. It's the same idea here with the plant. So if they have more hairs, they can keep the water a little longer, and that'll kind of cool them down a little bit. Then the last type is going to be root hairs. So here's a root growing, and then you can see all these little hairs growing off of it. And as I'm sure you can guess, that's to increase surface area so they can increase the amount of absorption that they're doing. So all three of those are going to be specializations of dermal tissue. Some plants may have more than others, and some might not have any at all. Okay, the next type of tissue that we're going to talk about is going to be ground tissue. <clears throat> and ground tissue is going to make up the bulk of the plant. So if you look... Oh, sorry. A little bit back here. There we go. That's going to be in yellow in this picture. So that's going to be the ground tissue. So there's a couple of types that a plant can have depending on what type of environment that it's going to live in. The first type is parenchymal cells. This is going to be the most common type. And that's what's pictured here. And this is actually something that you looked at in Bio 111 and Elodea leaf. And um, you looked at that under the microscope. And so you can see the walls here, right? They kind of look like bricks. And the walls are going to be pretty thin, but very uniform, the thickness, right? So that's going to be what most plants are going to have the most of. Um, here's another picture of them right here. So the green is going to, okay. <laughs> the green is going to be the cell walls. And you can see they're pretty much uniform all the way around. Very, very thin. Now, the next type are going to be what are called colenchymal cells. And if you look here, you can see that they're thin in some parts and then very thick in other parts. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow a plant to have flexibility but still grow pretty big and strong. So things that are going to grow in windy locations, things that are kind of tall and skinny, if you think about like corn or a sunflower, those would be, actually this is a picture of a sunflower stem right here. And here's another picture, um, a little bit fuzzy, but you can see the same um, idea. <clears throat> Now, the last type that we're going to talk about are going to be called sclerenchymal cells. And these are going to have a very, very, very thick cell wall. So everything you see that's dyed pink here is actually going to be sclerenchymal cell walls. So very, very thick. This is probably, yeah, it is from an ash tree. So this is going to be from woody trees. And um, obviously, that's going to give them the strength to grow really huge. The only downside to that is that it's not very flexible like those previous ones. And so if you think about it, if we get a really heavy snow or if we have really, really crazy wind, the trees just break because they're not as flexible because they're set up like that. So all of those are going to be types of ground tissue. <clears throat> then the last type of tissue is going to be vascular tissue, and that's going to be our xylem and phloem. So if we go back here, a couple slides, here we have our um, vascular tissue in purple. So this picture right here is great because remember how we said the xylem looks like the letter X and then the phloem is all those parts around it. And so the xylem is going to primarily um, conduct water throughout the plant and the phloem is going to conduct food throughout the plant. That's my lovely dog. Maggie, quiet. Um, now the reason that these are going to be located on the innermost part of the plant, as you can see here, is to reduce transpiration from happening. 
And transpiration is going to be how much water the plant loses to the environment. So obviously they don't want to do that. That's why they have stomata and cuticles and all of that stuff. And then another way they can deal with that is by having the xylem and phloem towards the center of the plant like you can see here. Okay. Now in this next part we're going to get into um, root structure and this is something that you've looked at in class as well. And here's our picture of the root. So the root is going to have different parts. We'll start at the bottom and then move our way up. So you've got our root cap here at the bottom and the point of the root cap, there's a couple. Um, one is that that's mostly dead cells and that's going to help it to push through the soil without damaging those new cells that are dividing right behind it. The other thing that it has is it actually has hormones in it. Auxin is the hormone. And that's going to be a hormone that's used to um, actually sense gravity so it knows what direction to send the roots. And then right behind that you're going to have the apical meristem, this kind of concentrated area of cells right here. And this is going to be located in the zone of cell division. So obviously in the zone of cell division that's going to be where mitosis is happening. And then just beyond that is going to be the zone of elongation, which I'm sure you can guess is where the cells are going to get longer than they are wide, and that's going to help with the growth of the, of the root. And then up here you can see the zone of differentiation, or it's also called the zone of maturation, and that's going to be where the cells are told what type of cell they're going to become. Are they going to become ground tissue, are they going to become vascular tissue, or dermal tissue? So up until that point, they haven't really been differentiated yet. So it's kind of like stem cells and animal cells. All right. So in the last video, what I'm going to get into is all the different types of modifications on roots and stems and leaves that plants can have um, in order to deal with different environments.